Hello, thank you for joining us again on this wonderful Sunday. As we go into the Word of God to share with you a message that I believe God has given me for this day and this time. Before we get into the message, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, we love you today. We thank you for who you are, that you are God all by yourself. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask, Lord, that you would open the eyes of our revelation knowledge, that we will receive your truth and your truth alone. I ask that you would anoint these lips of clay, that I will be an oracle of your word and of your way, and that all the glory and honor and praise will be to you. I ask this, that your light will shine forth into the darkness of our hearts and will illuminate to us the truth of salvation. I ask this in Jesus' sweet name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, I've been seeking the Lord's will and his desire. Uh, I've asked him through prayer and fasting, what does he want me to tell the church and the world? We're living in a day and a time uh, of a world that is in confusion and on the dangerous path to destruction. We live in a world that uh, people will say that they don't know what a woman is. They don't know what a man is. It's so messed up. We're living in that day and that time right now. 20 years ago, if someone would have told us that we would be facing certain things that we're facing now, that we'll be accepting certain things that we accept now in society, we would have wanted to lock them away in a rubber room because we would have said that that's impossible. No one with any common sense would uh, agree to something like that, would, would take something like that as being normal. Well, here we are, we're in that day, in that time. But as a subject of our messages today, the day of decision, uh, we're in a day, even though it's confusing, but we're in a day that we need to make a decision. Uh, if the Lord, if God be God, then we serve him. And if everything else is gonna be God in our lives, serve him, but you need to make a decision of who you're gonna serve, who you're going to uh, obey, who you're going to follow. Um, the Lord told me in his word to preach the gospel to everyone. In, in Mark, the 16th chapter, he tells us, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. There's no in-between there. Um, God is more serious than a heart attack about sin. Uh, he, is, he is telling us that he hates sin. God has always hated sin. God still hates sin. He hates sin so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on Calvary's cross for yours and my sin. Now, Lord warned us about the religious uh, folks who have taught the doctrines of men and made the word the word of God of none effect. He told us about that. So I'm going to read that to you. But before we get to that, Isaiah 40 and 1 says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. God is saying to each and every one of us, I know this was to Israel, in Isaiah's day, but he's also saying to us, and that's one thing about the word of God, it is, a, it is a word that is now. It's a now word. It's not a word of yesterday. It's not a word of tomorrow, but it's a word of right now. It's a right now word of truth that will stand until tomorrow, that will stand from yesterday. It is constant. We can, we can rely upon the word of God. Um, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low. Now this is this is saying it's going to be a plain path. It's going to be a path that is easy to follow if you choose to follow. Jesus tells us, he that exalted himself shall be abased, but he that humbles himself shall be exalted. And the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God cannot lie. He speaks the truth because he is the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's not only the truth, but he's also the source of life. If you want life, you want Jesus Christ. The voice said, cry. In other words, God told him to cry. And then he asked the question, what shall I cry? Well, all flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. In other words, everything that's not of God, everything that's not tied into the promises of God is as grass. It's not something that you can uh, depend upon. It's not something that you can uh, be, put, put your foundation upon. Jesus says, uh, anyone that hears my word and listens to my word, does my word, would be like a house built upon a rock. And when the storms come, the wind hit it, and whatever, it will stand. But whoever hears my word and does not follow my word, does not do my word, does not apply my word to their life, it's like a house built upon sand. And when the wind comes and the storms come, it will beat up on that house and that house will fall and great will be the fall thereof. You can look around in your life and see tragedies happening. The tragedies of lives that have failed, lives that are destroyed, lives that are, are, are brought uh, into uh, total destruction because they have rejected the truth of the word of God. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is as grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But look at this. But the word of our God shall stand forever. And that's what he tells us in Isaiah. But this is what Jesus is saying about those religious folks uh, that are preaching not the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're preaching their own gospel, a false gospel, a false good news, a good news that tells you only about God's love, but doesn't warn you about the wrath of God that's coming upon those who are given over to sin. Um, in Mark, the seventh chapter, starting at verse six, he answered and said unto them, well, has Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They have the name Christian upon their church. They put, uh, put forth as if they are preachers of the Christian faith, and yet there is no faith and there is no Christian because they are not Christ-like. They are flesh-like. They are only trying to uh, please the flesh. They're only trying to speak to the flesh. And they're only trying to receive of the flesh. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In other words, that's what their standards are and their rules are upon the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things ye do. In other words, the outward appearance. They look righteous. They look holy. They look uh, good. But in the heart is a, is a different matter. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of, our, of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curses father or mother, let him die to death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, or it is a gift. That is to say, a gift by who, whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. In other words, they would say, I'm sorry, I can't help my mother or my father. I can't help those of my household because I'm helping the church. I'm helping 
the uh, the temple. I'm helping the synagogue. I'm helping uh, the priest or whatever. Um, he shall be free. In other words, the, the, the preachers of that day were telling them, if he, you're going to give it to do an offering to the to the temple, or an offering to the synagogue, mm -hmm. then you're free to be able to uh, not have to take care of your family, not have to take care of your obligations towards your mother or father and taking care of them in their old age. And you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye. In other words, you take those things that will profit you and you reject the things of God that would profit the kingdom of God. Even though you do it under the, the guise that it is for the kingdom of God, but it's really not for the kingdom of God. It's for you, for you to take advantage of people, for you to profit yourself. You're after the money, you're after their possessions, you're after their fame, you're after their honor, you're after all of these things. In other words, the honor that should only go to God, you want as the preacher, as the evangelist, as the pastor, as the, the, the deacons or whoever, whatever position you have in the, in the church, you bypass anything that will be gone in recognizing the leadership of the Holy Ghost, the leadership of God's spirit. You, re you reject that and you want all eyes to be placed upon you. You're demanding the worship that is due only to God. In other words, the teaching rules and regulations and traditions in the place of the word of God and just getting people to join their church without having a saving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, who actually is the one that bought and paid for the church with his blood on Calvary. There are enough sins identified, and this is, this is something else. There's enough sins identified in the word of God to keep you out of heaven and cause you to wind up in hell without us inventing new sins to condemn people. And the, and the sins that we invent to condemn people are not the sins that the word is uh, calling sins. But we call it sin because it's not benefiting or profiting our church. It's not benefit or profiting our ministry. It's not benefit or profiting uh, our flesh. James said it this way. You, you ask, you have not because you ask not. And then when you ask, you ask amiss or ask for the wrong reason so that you can consume it upon your own lust. Where is Jesus? Where is your... A commitment to Christ. Where is he at on your uh, list? Is he at the top? Is he the first priority? Is he the first things first? Or do you use him only to get what you actually want? And where is your heart toward him? I'm talking to everyone. I'm talking to the preachers, talking to the pastors, talking to the bishops. I'm talking to everybody in the church. I'm talking to you, asking you, where is Jesus in your life? If he's not number one, he's not there at all. Jesus is this way. Either, either he is number one in your life or he's not in your life. He's not going to take second place to anybody or anything. He must be first. When God gave the law, he gave us 10 commandments. The actual little translation is the 10 words. The 10 words, God gave 10 words. But when the religious people got finished with it, when the Pharisees and all those got finished with it, with their commentators on the Torah, uh, there were at least 613 laws that were put on the people. Peter spoke about this in Acts the 15th chapter, starting at verse five. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, 
Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying the hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Get in the word. Obey the word. Get it in your heart and follow the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not saved, then you can't follow his voice because you don't know him. But you can know him if you listen to the gospel and receive it and believe it. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. You will, you will develop, uh, you will have a relationship with him because he will bring you in to his family, the family of God. All of us need to first recognize that we need a savior. Until that's realized, there can be no salvation. Until you recognize you're sick, the doctor can't help you. Until you recognize that you're in trouble with the law, the lawyer can't help you. As long as we think we're okay and we're good to go, we're good enough, we won't admit that we're sinners before a holy God. And we need to repent of our sins. And we need to be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We got to be born again. You got to be changed on the inside. It's not just an outward thing. Man looks on the outward, but God sees the heart. Some of us, some of us even after we get saved, are too proud to admit when we fall short of God's will. And we won't confess our sins so that he can forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you're a pastor, you say, I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't admit or confess that I sinned, that I messed up, that I made the wrong, wrong uh, choice or whatever. Too proud. And you lose out with God. You lose fellowship with God. But let me tell you something. No matter what position you hold in the church, no matter how long you've been claiming to be a Christian, if you have not submitted to the truth of God's word, you're in, a, you're in a bad way. You're in a bad position. You're in a dangerous position. This is the day of decision that you have to make, that you're going to reject the past. You're going to embrace the present by calling on the name of the Lord. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, whoever Christian, whoever church person, whoever unsaved person, Whoever it is that calls upon the name of the Lord will not be ashamed, but they will be saved. That's what he's telling us. This is the day of decision. You say, well, who are you to tell me this, Abraham? I'll tell you who I am. I'm a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save your soul. That's who I am. I'm just a lump of clay in the hand of God. But God is reaching out to you and saying, come all you that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. If you trust in me, if you seek my face, if you will turn from your wicked ways, I'll save you. I'll deliver you. I'll make you mine. There's a there's a doctor in Columbia that uh, operated on my wife's ear. And uh, he was one of the, uh, the few in the country that certified to, be, to operate anywhere in the country uh, in that particular field of medicine. Uh, but there are others in the state of Missouri that couldn't do that, that can op could have operated but they could only operate here in the state of Missouri. But this doctor could operate anywhere in the country. I want to tell you, there's nobody anywhere in creation that can save you but Jesus Christ. 
Muhammad can't save you. Buddha can't save you. Confucius can't save you. Your daddy can't save you. Your mother can't save you. Your pastor can't save you. Your uncle can't save you. Your sister and brother can't save you. Your, your parents can't save you. Your, your children can't save you. Your friends can't save you. And your government can't save you. Your politician can't save you. Only Jesus Christ can save you from your sins because only Jesus Christ died for your sins so that you might have a right to the tree of life. When he came to the Jordan, after leaving, leaving Nazareth, and John was baptized in there, John saw him, and John declared, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now we sing the song, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other thought I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming again. When he ascended to heaven, he was there on the mount. And as he blessed the, the disciples that were there, all of that were there, he blessed them. And the Bible says that, he, he went up into heaven and a cloud separated him. And then two uh, angels stood there and said to them, you men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking up? This same Jesus that you just saw go up is coming again. He's coming back. Jesus told us that I, I will go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. But that's only for those that know him those that have a relationship with him, those that have made a decision on the day of decision. If you haven't made that decision for Jesus, you're not going to go back with him. If you don't make that decision for Jesus, you won't have eternal life. You'll have eternal damnation in a devil's hell if you don't make that choice for Jesus. You're not your own. you bought with a price. I want you to know that Jesus not only is coming back, but you need to get your eyes off the titles. You need to get your eyes off those positions. You need to get your eyes off of money and possessions. You need to get your eyes on the heart and your heart on Jesus Christ. The writer of Hebrews says it in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, Endured the shame and the cross. Thank you, Lord. There's only one way to heaven. Now, you might have a pastor that won't tell you that. You might have a preacher that won't tell you that. You might have a friend or a neighbor that won't tell you that. But I'm going to tell you, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. He told us that no man comes to the Father except by him. That's out of his mouth. That's not out of the mouth of, of uh, just the disciples. That's out of his own mouth. No man comes to the Father except by me. Then he said this, no man can come to me except the Father draw him. And if God isn't drawing, you ain't coming. But you need to open your hearts to the Lord and call upon his name and ask him to come in and save you. This is the day of decision. If you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in danger of eternal damnation in hell. I'm not here to sugarcoat it. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm not here to uh, uh, massage your ego. I'm here to tell you the truth. Somebody else won't tell you. I'm going to tell you the truth. Doesn't matter what position you hold. Being a pastor is not going to get you to heaven. Being a preacher is not going to get you to heaven. Being a deacon is not going to get you to heaven. Even being a religious person, a member of the church is not going to get you to heaven. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're going to be in that, that group that Jesus looks at in that day when we stand before him. And he tells you to depart from him. And you say, but Lord, Lord, I cast out devils in your name. I, I, I prophesied in your name. I preached. I taught. I did all these things in your name. And he says, depart from me. I don't know you. I don't know you. 
you workers of iniquity. What does he mean? He means that you have not been saved. You have not had a relationship to me with me. You haven't received the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. This is the day of decision. You have not made that decision. And now it's too late when you stand before him. When you take your last breath and you stand, find yourself standing at the judgment seat of Christ, waiting on eternity, and you don't know him, you will never know him as Lord and Savior. You will only know him as judge because God has left the judgment up to him to judge the whole world. He will judge both the living and the dead. Don't let your flesh deceive you. I say to you, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Stop looking at your neighbor. Stop looking at other folks. Stop looking at the past. Stop looking at what uh, other folks are saying. But look at yourself and ask God to save you, to deliver you. No one can confess for you. No one can accept for you. It's a personal thing. If you don't know Christ Jesus is your Lord and Savior, get up right where you are. Get up from your position that you've been had away from him and come to him. Repent of your sins and ask him to save you. He'll, he, he'll do it. He will do it in less than two minutes or sec 60 seconds. It don't take long. A Kodak minute. He will save you. You'll be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son, Jesus Christ, the kingdom of light. This is your opportunity. This is your day of decision. Who will you save? I, Elijah said to them on Mount Carmel, he said, how long halt you between two opinions? And that word halt there, the Hebrew word for it is translated halt, but it means how long are you hopping from one foot to the other? How long are you hopping from one position to the other? Make up your mind, make the charge, make the decision. He says, if God be God, serve him. If it, Baal is Baal, serve him. But he said it this way. He said, the God who answers by fire, let him be God. And he has answered by fire because Jesus came to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Fire will burn up your passions. The fire will burn up your sins and your iniquities. The, the fire will burn up your prejudices and your, your uh, uh, grudges and, and, and your anger and all of your wrath. The, the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn it up. And you will be made into one who is like Jesus. You become, instead of a son of Adam, the first Adam, you become the son of, a son of God, the one and only, the second Adam. He's telling you, he's calling you. Answer that call and say, yes, Lord. Say yes to the Lord. Father, this is the day of decision. And I have to say, as Joshua says, I've taught my children. I've taught everyone that I know. I have not moved from your word and from your standards. Even when I might have fallen short, I've confessed that I fell short. Even when I might have not been in line, I've confessed that I'm not in line. Lord, I need to get in line. Help me to get in line. Even when I have messed up, I did not hesitate in saying, Lord, forgive me and restore me. Restore that fellowship with you. For I need you, Lord. And these, your people need you. Those that are listening right now that are asking to be saved, do it, Jesus. Do it according to your word. Change them from the inside out. Transform by the renewing of their mind, transform them so that they will walk upright before you in true holiness, your holiness, your righteousness, not their own righteousness, but your righteousness that is only of you, that you took to the cross and you exchanged it for our sins. You gave, you offered to us your righteousness and you took from us our sins so that as the East is from the West, they'll never meet again. 
our sins will never meet with us again. You have separated us from them. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. And Father, watch over these people. Let them know your presence, not as a visitation, but as a habitation. From now until when you return, Jesus, forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints. Make that decision today for Jesus. Go with God.